So I keep getting asked more and more about my own fishing, so I thought it was a perfect time to get a little bit of a diary piece on the go. So it's going to be a little bit about my fishing, some behind the scenes of the filming side of things, um, and generally just kind of what goes on in my life. So recently I've gone self-employed, winning ways is taking up a big part of my time, and I've recently la launched All In Angling, which is sort of a monthly video match fishing magazine. So I'm getting, getting to spend loads of time out with different anglers. So this month I've already been out with Des Ship, Craig Edmonds, um, out with Andy Geldart next week. So I'm traveling all over the country, doing all sorts of stuff. So hopefully there's gonna be a bit of, uh, bit of stuff that's of interest to people, and obviously all the behind the scenes stuff that goes on. So to catch you up a bit on my own fishing, most, most of my time through the summer is generally spent chasing qualifiers, obviously. Going back to, I think it was 2015, I qualified Fishermania, and since then it's kind of been the main focus to try and get back in one of the big finals. So this year it's been a little bit different with lockdown. Um, going back to, was it March or April, just before lockdown, I was down in Somerset doing some filming for Spotted Fin. Um, I was down for a few days and it fell perfectly. So I had the Wednesday was the first, I think it was the first or second Fishermania qualifier of the year. So sorted a ticket out for that. And it was at Viaduct, which is a venue I don't think I've actually fished a match on there. I've been, been a few times doing features with various people. I've been out the day before with a couple of the spotted fin lads and we'd caught absolutely loads. So I kind of had a rough idea of what we needed to do. And anyone that knows the venue, 124 is kind of where you want to draw. It's one of those pegs that I think pretty much everyone in the country who fishes qualifiers knows about. It's literally lift off. So quite strangely, um, it wasn't drawn. So there's been the best peg on the lake has been empty and obviously everyone was saying one two three was probably going to dominate from there um, and I've actually ended up drawing one two two next to it so it felt like half a chance but I was always just off the area and I've had uh, John Hannon next to us on one two three um, so as the match has gone on he's had two two fish early fishing up to one two four platform because that's empty and it's turned out that that that's what's cost us in the end so he he's made made the use of the space he's beat us by about 15 pound um and i've ended up second on the day which was sort of one of those bittersweet results where yeah it's a nice day you win a few quid but it really hurts when you're that close to to qualifying again so it was a good start to the sea, uh, qualifying campaign, but then obviously COVID's hit and everything's been cancelled and it's all gone to pot a bit. Over the last month or so, it's been just quite nice spending a bit of time fishing locally. Um, and this is one of the places I've been coming to quite a bit, Birch House. Um, you'll probably have seen it on the 16 metre challenge. We were on um, Teal Lake over there, um, which is absolutely rammed with big carp. But I've kind of brought you here today to have a little look at what I've been doing on um, Lake One this is. So it's traditionally known as a carp lake. Um, the big old fish in here, kind of 15, 20 pound they go up to. Um, but the thing you find is they are proper moody fish. So the last few matches, I've been spending a bit more time um, targeting the silverfish and doing some decent weights of them. So thought it'd be the ideal opportunity to kind of run you through what we've been doing. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the rigs, how we're feeding it and ultimately go and catch a few fish. So the lake itself is probably quite typical of a lot of these sort of day ticket venues where it's not been stocked for a good number of years so you can't, they're big but they're quite wise so you look at any of the match results 60, 80, occasionally 100 pounds is going to be up there you're going to, going to win some money um, but when you look at how people are catching you generally get one or two carp early and then you'll catch a few down the edge. You can do sort of 40, 50 pound in the last hour. So especially when it's a six hour match, there's a lot of time spent doing not a lot and catching not a lot. And it kind of started off as a bit of a, uh, I think it was a second match I fished on it. I'd not caught a lot all day and got a bit bored. So kind of set myself a little challenge just to see how many silver I could, I could catch. And I've just started rafting in maggots and probably only fished for them for sort of like an hour and a half and had 20 odd pound and that was on gear that wasn't right for it i was using two heavy elastic bumping a few and like i've stuck 20 pound in the net in an hour and a half so as soon as you start working those numbers out it suddenly becomes viable that if you can keep that catch rate going all day 
um, you can end up doing a decent weight of them and, and actually competing with a car. So the next time I've come down, I've played about with the gear, gone lighter on the elastics, set some proper shallow rigs up for them, and we've, we've caught quite a few. To be fair, the first time I tried it, I've drawn absolute epicentre of a car peg. Um, so I've caught a few and then they've turned up down the edge and I've ended up winning the match, but I've ended up winning it with carp. So kind of didn't prove it or disprove it anyway. But the next time I've come, the majority of my weight has been silvers. So it's proved itself. And I think the last, very last match I fished here a couple of weeks ago, I've ended up doing 60, 70 pound of the things and adding a couple of carp to them in the last hour down the edge, you've like 80, 90 pound, you're pretty much gonna win every match like that. So when it comes to the actual fishing, it's just a case of picking a spot that you can comfortably throw maggots to. So for me, it's sort of like, depending on the wind, five sections on the pole, and you basically set up three different rigs. So float wise, they're all pretty much the same. You're kind of looking for carbon stem, slim body, basically something that you can just let fall nice and naturally and then shotting patterns are all going to be really strung out. So start off with a 4v14, that's going to be the one fishing on the deck. With them, generally go quite long on the lash, just because it silvers and that sort of thing you can do. You can get away with it, keep the pole off the top of the heads. So that's your deck rig, and generally you don't want to be on that too long. You sort of start off on that, that's your sort of indicator rig, so you can find out where the fish are in the peg, if you've got any in front of you. Um, occasionally you'll have to drop down back onto that and just catch a few off the deck and sometimes they are the bigger skimmers so it's worth obviously have it set up but ideally you don't want to be spending too much time on that and then moving on to the shallow rigs which is where you want to be spending most of your time I've got two um, first one is set what's that probably three or four foot so you probably I think it's about six foot out there um, so first one's kind of three four foot Again, leaving a decent lash on that so you can play about with that during the day. They're not, it's not like fishing for F1s where you need really short lashes. Um, generally, when it goes, it goes. Um, so again, that's a 4b12 on this one. Spread, it, spread shot all the way down, give it a nice natural fall. And again, because it's the carbon stem on there, um, you can watch it and you can gauge nice and easily where they are in the water. And then just one more, which is generally pretty much exactly the same just slightly smaller on the float 4v10 uh, again same style and everything this one just to keep it all a little bit more balanced i've cut that stem down a little bit um, but yeah again strung out shot all the way down and that's probably give it foot and a half two foot on there yeah foot and a half probably that set and that's the one you really want to be want to be doing the weight on so if you can get them up feeding in the water that sort of depth that's where you're going to catch them so that's the rigs covered Bait wise, literally you just want plenty of maggots. So minimum of four pints, probably six pints if you want to be on the safe side. Um, unfortunately, we've got a bit of a concoction today. Um, normally just go red and white, but they didn't have any reds at the tackle shop for some reason. So we've got a proper concoction, mainly whites. We've even got some blue ones and bright yellow ones and pink ones and everything. And there's a daddy long legs in there for some reason. Where's he come from? <laughs> So, but yeah, it'd be nice to catch them on a blue maggot, but that's all we've got. Um, but yeah, obviously in a match situation, you'd probably set a rig up for carp, so probably have a shallow rig out long and then one down the edge. That's all you'd set up um, and just start fishing, catch, try and catch a carp early and then move on to the silvers and maybe a few carp late. But it's absolutely mega fishing, so we'll, we'll get the gear sorted and hopefully show you how to catch a few. So in a match situation, I'd like to give it sort of half a pot of big, half a big pot of maggots, dump that straight in on the line and give it 15, 20 minutes to settle. So in that time, you kind of go and try and nick a carp shallow, chuck a bomb out, see if you can nick one like that. And to be fair, that's generally where you're going to, you, you've got that chance of an early carp. And then after that, they seem to shut down once they realise they're being fished for. After you've given it 20 minutes to settle on that line, you want to start off with the deck rig. So with this, all you're trying to do is find out exactly what you've got in your peg and where they are. So single single white maggot we'll start off with. I'm not a massive fan of double, double maggots for this. Just want to find out exactly what's there. Um, and you can play about how you hook them, but to be fair, I've not noticed any difference. And for me, hooking them through the base of the maggot, a little bit quicker. So when you're trying to put a big weight together, that's probably the route I prefer to go down. So start off give it a feed 
where you want to go. Probably only 20 or so, 20 maggots or so. You don't want to put loads in. And you just want to lay the rig out and let that fall through. And obviously, because you've got that carbon, there we go, one's took it straight away. So, see that's not got anywhere near the deck. See if we can swing in. So he's not got, terrible swing in there. He's not got anywhere near the deck, so we'll see. If that happens again, we're gonna know straight away that they're up in the water. And we need to be on one of the shallow rigs, which is a brilliant sign. So fresh maggot on there. Feed him again. But generally in a match, you tend to find that it starts off that you're waiting a bit longer, you're having to fish on the deck for a few fish, and you, then you can start bringing them up in the water. And with this, you can just watch it, watch it go down. You can still see the float still on the wonk a bit. So that's got down to the deck, and pretty much just as it's touched down, that's gone and we've pinged out of him. So check your bait, fold it over, that's right. Put a fresh one on but this is all about trying to find exactly where they are and then once you know where they are you can start trying to catch a few so again feed him get him back out but obviously with with us pleasure fishing today i think we're going to be fairly quick getting them up in the water but you can just wash him down it's probably about half depth just as it's touched touch down. But I think this is the thing that puts a lot of people off doing this. You're catching these sort of stamp fish, little perch that's absolutely swallowed it. And they're probably a couple of ounce a piece sort of thing. But once you start, once you start feeding, you're getting through these fish, that's when, when your bigger fish start to turn up. So a lot of people, they'll catch that, think oh this is a waste of time and then go sit, sit out cop so generally you've got it all to yourself but we'll catch a few more on this and I think fairly soon they'll start coming up in the water that roach was a good sign early on see where this one goes and it depends on the day sometime that was just off bottom sometimes it'll be a case that you catch on on the deck for an hour before they start coming up in the water other days are pretty much shallow straight away. So I don't think it will take too long with us, with us pleasure fishing today. But it's just a case of playing about with your feeding. Kind of being, being on it when it comes to um, changing rigs. So just because you're catching at a depth for a bit, they can quickly move. And to do a weight, you've got to be kind of prepared to change and keep an, keep an eye. You just want to be getting indications all the time. So we're getting a few on this steeper rig, but we're getting a lot of little dinks on the way down. So there we go. That's, oh, that's tiny fish grabbing it on the way down. Try and get one more on this, but I reckon they're definitely, definitely starting to come up in the water. So see, is he going to settle? Little dink there. So it does go eventually, but really we want to be catching them a lot quicker. And perch are generally, if they're the only ones you're catching on the deck, that seems to be the sign that everything else is up in the water. So give him another feed. And we'll switch over to that middle rig, which is a sort of three foot one, four by 12. And kind of gear wise, we're We've not gone mega, mega light, because you will hook carp on this. So especially once you get them going shallow, you'll get the old carp. So we've gone for sort of 013 and we're size 16 Guru F1 pellet. So it's, it's obviously, it's not carp gear, but you can, if you play them gently, get them out. So you don't want to be slapping it as such, just sort of lay it, lay it in. You can sort of lay it in like that, which is a bit quicker rather than faffing around, but you don't want to be repeatedly repeatedly slapping or anything like that. But you can get, once you think that up in the water, you can sort of get them going a bit, a bit more regularly on the feed. 
keep, keep an eye out for sort of swirls on the surface as that'll be the sign that you want to be want to be getting them um, getting on that even shallower rig and don't be afraid to sort of let it hang because I've found that generally once you catch through the water your smaller roach stuff like that but when you're catching your bigger skimmers they tend to be as it sort of reach reach the bottom of the fall sitting there and then it'll go so it's not like f1s where once it's gone once it's stopped falling that you kind of want to be laying it in again don't be afraid to sort of give it give it a few seconds once it's reached the bottom of the fall little dink there something going on so there's fish about obviously with it being that little bit cooler Okay, that's a fair of fish. But keep the feed going in a bit more regularly once you've got them up in the water. But what are we? He's sort of like six ounce or so. But if you can be getting one of them a bung, they soon start adding up and you soon get covered in snot. So change of update. it's all about just getting into like getting into a nice rhythm everyone says it but you sort of as soon as you start get, trying to go too fast that's where you start messing things up and as long as you're going in getting a bite putting a fish in the net and repeating it if you do that for six hours you're putting a good weight together there we go little fish this time but it's just keep keep them fish going in the net Really? It'll be all right. Get another one out of that. Andy will be angry at me for that. But if you can get get two fish out of maggot, they're all good. I'm sure that used to be a little challenge when you were a kid. See how many bites you could get on a single maggot. I think you could get to like nine or ten fish without trying before it started to look a bit ropey. That's a bit bigger. Well, that, they're the ones you want. And these are like the better skimmers, but the smaller, better skimmers. So if you can catch these, you're all right. But you can get little runs of the, the bigger, like big black old ones that they're kind of a pound. The, the bigger ones are sort of like a pound, two pounds. So if you have a little spell catching them, you're going to go for three fish on that maggot. Another little feed. But you can see sort of these ones are all as it sort of reached the maximum depth so at the moment this rig feels probably about right even go a fraction deeper but as soon as you start getting them on the drop sort of thing where it's not had time to settle the or you see the float dart off sideways that's when you want to be want to be changing swirl there just behind the float so that that's where you really do the damage is once you get onto that shallower rig and you can catch them sort of a foot or so, well, probably two foot that's set at the moment, but you can, can get them shallower than that. But it's crazy. You'll see odd little swirls like that, but you'll have a peg full of like three pound skimmers. You don't, you wouldn't have thought they were there, but then every time you're laying your float in, I think there must be a big ball of them sat just below and they're just coming up every time you feed. But, Ooh, don't want them to ping off. Change that up, mate. I think this elastic is probably getting a little bit, little bit pingy as it's been cut down a few times. I need to change him before the weekend. But get one more on this. I'll have a bit of a fish. Try and put some in the net, and then hopefully we'll get them proper shallow in a bit. And we'll show you that. Ooh. He was definitely up in the water. Just a little fish again. But even then, at like a couple of ounces, if you can be sticking them in your net all day, like if you do one a minute of those, you can work it out over six hours. It soon adds up. So I'm going to carry on with this for a bit. I reckon a bit more, a bit longer. They'll be up in, up on that proper shallow rig. That maggot needs changing. And we'll come back then and see what it's like. 
So we've been catching fairly well on this kind of middle rig, but we're just starting to see getting like indications where you're striking and there's nothing there, seeing the odd swirl. So I think it's probably getting to about the point where we're going to be on that even shallower rig. So I'll give that, I've not tried him yet, so this could, could all go terribly wrong. Give him a quick feed and where are we? That one. So again, everything the same, just shallower, slightly lighter float, little 4 be tent. Should we go? What are we going? Too much choice on maggot. I did have a few on the blue one earlier as well. So we might, that might be the might be the answer. So feed him again. James, who's doing the filming, did did comment on me right-handed throwing. But to be fair, I think as you're going round, it's kind of puts your hand in the perfect position to grab your pole. So I'm, I'm saying it's a little bit more efficient. Probably looks awkward as anything, but there you can go. Slightly better fish straight away. Yep. They're the ones, if you can line them up, and obviously the shallower you are, the quicker it's going to be. Because obviously wait, waiting for that for that rig to kind of fall through each time. Um, just clean off any slime on there. Obviously waiting for him to fall through further, it's gonna take longer. So the sooner you can get them up to that sort of shallowest rig possible, is the sooner you can kind of start putting a proper weight together. There we go. They're the ones you want. Oh, come on. There's a few, there has been a few of these like better rods. You can tell they're the big old boys that have probably been in a year. So that's, I'll see, he's probably five, six ounce, but there's some that are going to kind of like getting close to two pound that I've had them. Definitely sort of pound and a half. So if you can be catching them, proper old fish to catch. But I'll go for a few more. Because this, this is the sort of position you want to be getting to in the match as soon as possible and once they're there they seem to stay you might need to follow them out might need to sort of stick a section on or go back on the slightly deeper rig or if it gets really bad you can go back on the deck and almost repeat the process proper jumping skimmer but they're they're the bigger fish and it's mad you see it like just be careful with these just let the elastic do do the work Let's see, he's probably getting getting to a pound sort of thing. But they're the ones, if you can get them, one a bung. Big old thing. And they're the ones you want to be catching. So we'll keep that fee going in. But you can start to see, once it gets like this, how, how quick you can sort of put weight together. As long as you're keeping in touch with everything, you're not going too long without a bite. Keep, keep the feed going in. And as long as, if you're putting a fish every couple of minutes in your net, you're soon, soon gonna do a decent weight. And it's just about keeping in contact with them, not missing bites like that. And just reading, reading what's going on in your peg. So if, you, if it does start to slow down, you, you can obviously go to that sort of middle rig Go back on him, catch a few on that, try and bring him back up in the water again. If it goes really bad, you can sort of go back on the deck, which sometimes, if you get a bit overexcited on the feeding, um, you can find that they've sort of congregated a bit more on the bottom, so you can just, just go and restart the process effectively. Are we going to swing him? We'll net him. But you can just restart that process, go back on the deck, catch a couple up on there, but you're putting a few ounces in the net every every minute sort of thing. So the rate people catch carp on here, you've got to think if you're catching 80 pounds, you'll be up there. And at this sort of rate, with those better stamped fish, you can easily get there or thereabouts. It's six hour matches. If you can do 15 pounds an hour, you're pretty much sorted. So we'll catch one more on this. And then we'll come back at the end and see what sort of weight we're doing. Because I reckon if I get my head down, 
can have a nice little catch within a few hours. Because we've said that, we're not going to get a bite. I'm going to miss it. Actually. I'll tell you what we might do. See what the reaction is to a blue maggot. We've got some of these. We're discussing this actually. Does any, like, no one seems to actually buy mixed maggots for match fishing. I think it's just because people are embarrassed. But blue maggots, I don't know, I reckon they might be the future. They are smaller, they're almost like blue pinkies. What are we saying? Big one? Missed him. But you can just see this short rig, how much quicker it actually is. If they're there. Little swirl. Yeah. What are we saying? Proper bream on the blue maggot. Oh, he is as well. He might be the biggest one of the day, actually. With a blue. There we go. Little blue maggot in his mouth. You probably can't see that. There we go. Little blue one. Bream. But we're going to catch plenty more of these, I reckon. So leave us to it, and we'll come back at the end and show you what we caught. So probably three, three and a bit hours fishing. Um, and to be honest, it's been proper kind of iffy. It's been a lot more fish we've caught on that longer rig and it's been a case that you've really got to be on it. You'll catch a few, few on the really shallow rig and then dropping down to the kind of three, four foot one and even having to go out the extra section. But it's one of those you don't feel like you're catching a lot, but when you get them out, there's probably 40, 45 pound in there. So hell of a lot of silvers for the first three hours. We've put a couple of carp back. So it just kind of goes to show that if you get your head down, they add up and you can do a decent weight. A few, few carp last hour, jobs are good. And so hopefully we'll catch that and probably the same again in the other net on Sunday.